catches though as ever and uh, body and soul is the first horse we're going to uh, have a look at uh, here and this horse was in action uh, recently and one that um trained by tim easterby here it is at the back of the field the blue and yellow colors running at uh, ripon i believe yeah a couple of reasons why i think um this horse might improve significantly on this on this reappearance um First of all, she's a three-year-old in a, in a handicap for older horses. And in sprint handicaps at this time of year, um, I think they face a tough task. Well, the statistics show their strike rate uh, overall is it doesn't start to get respectable really until about July, August in, uh, against older horses. She travelled quite well, and I thought she shaped as if she was just in need of the run in the, uh, in the end, which would be entirely fitting with, with what's been happening with her stable. I think there's something like two from 64, first time out this year. Mm. And um, uh, so I'd expect her to come on from this. I think she's fairly handicapped, and she'll be interesting back in uh, a, a handicap against her own, uh, her own age group. Uh, it just occurred to me, I've not really thought of this, but the... the there's always that big sponsored three-year-old uh, handicap at York, the six furlong one um, in, in mid-June that, that they might have in, in mind for her. And she just about, she'd been just the right ratings bracket for that, I would think. Mm. So I just thought there was a lot, although she's ended up being beaten a, a few lengths in the end, I thought she probably went like she needed the run. And I'd underline again that three-year-olds do tend to face a stiff task against older horses at this time of year in sprints, mm. in sprints. Mm. Yeah, she had a good uh, campaign, she says, as a juvenile. That's Body and Soul, the first one to look out for. What about Elle Woods? Now, I was calling this race up at Doncaster on Saturday evening. She caught my eye during the race, was travelling really well. It looked like his, she was going to take off once she got room. She didn't really fire in the end, but was still a big eye catcher. She's either needed the run or, or possibly more likely she might be worth trying back at, at six furlongs because, as you say, she, she travels all over them. Um, Just here you thought it's a question of when she's going to go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the stable's been in very good form this spring as well. Uh, and uh, I, it'll be interesting to see what, they, what trip they try her at next time because that might tell a tale about whether the trainer feels she's, and, and, and the rider feels that she's just needed the run or whether she's just not got home over seven. Um, I like the winner as well off art. He, he'd shaped really well and he'd been a rare, he'd been one of those two um, Tim Easterby winners on his reappearance and they've been rare indeed so I think that's a horse to to keep mm. on the right side as well but um, although she finishes only third in the end I think El Woods there was enough to like there that mm. to suggest that she'll be one to keep in, interested in next time. Yeah she ran well just just to sort of play devil's advocate that the two market leaders didn't run their race they Intimidate and African Oil who I think played up before the race they were both been a long way in that race. Would that, would yeah, that affect your reading of the form or, or not? They'd both come from Polytrack, haven't they? Um, I know African Oil had, had been one of my eye catchers and I, I, I wasn't so interested uh, back on You on see Intimidate in the back with the light blue just yeah, didn't finish off the race for whatever No, reason. but I'd, on the other hand, I do like the winner. I think the... Um, he pulled well clear with another horse who actually disappointed next time at, at first, but um, those, that, that looked solid form to me, and mm. I think he's, he's a horse who's likely raced and going, going the right way. So you're right, you may be right, it might have been cut up as quite a weak race in the end, but you still, you still look at the way that she travelled yeah. and you think, well, there, there must be more to come somewhere. Yeah, she's got a high cruising speed. That's L Woods in the Andrew Tinkler colours there, ran at Doncaster on Saturday night. A horse that ran at Chepstow uh, last week is a horse called Tenbridge, trained by Derek Hayden Jones. Finished second here behind a horse called Peak Storm Hugh. This horse was running on the all weather during the uh, the spring and uh, ran quite well here on the turf. Yeah, this is going to be painful for me to watch because Peak Storm had been one of my eye catchers on on his previous start, but I just preferred Tenbridge, who was probably a much bigger price on the day as well and Tenbridge has gone through the race like like the best horse at the weights in my opinion has just probably ended up having too much use made of her too soon mm. but this is only the second time she's run on on soft ground on turf and she'd won in really impressive style in a miles better race than this at, uh, at Lingfield last year and she's very much one to look out for when it's soft ground again she's as I say she's only run twice on it and she's run really well both times she's very very well handicapped on her best form just mowing down, having she set the race up for for Peak Storm, who's, who's another still to be interested in back at Chepstow because he he looks he's starting to look like a Chepstow specialist, um, and the handicap. I only had a quick look, but from if 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 I wasn't mistaken, the handicap has not taken that severe a, a view of that. I think the winner's gone up five and the runner up only two, and Tembridge in particular, I think, is really well handicapped at the moment. Yeah, here it is again, as you can see, was out in front here. They're going to that little dip at Chepstow with a furlong to go, and then. Just gets worn down by the, the strong finishing peak storm here in the green who overhauls him, but, but 
as you say, it was a good performance trying to make all the running here. And uh, they were quite well strung out in behind, weren't they, in this race? They, they were. That's why I'm a bit surprised that the handicapper hasn't taken a more punitive view. I, I, admittedly, it, it was a day where it rained all day and the ground was getting more testing by the, by the hour at Chepstow. But um, I think those two will, in, in the grade will be winning again. OK. Now, we may look back at the, the Park Hill Hospital handicap from Doncaster on Saturday night in a, in a few months, thinking, wow, what a bet uh, Kate Perron was uh, in that odds against. Now, obviously, it was easy to get carried away by the winner, who was very impressive for yeah. Henry Candy, but it's the second horse, Gorn, who's, who's caught your eye. Yeah, just, I, I just have a, a, a view that sometimes if you horses that finish second against handicap good things can get underestimated slightly by, by the handicap, and Gorn, I think, might have gone up a pound, something like that, but... Um, you need to be a bit cautious because I don't think they went a mad gallop here, but um, obviously the winner is in a completely different league to the rest and will, will be heading for bigger and better things. But Gwon was a horse I'd been very much interested in um, following. He'd, he'd won at Wolverhampton, yeah. Hadn't he? I remember Graham yeah, he'd, he'd won at Wolverhampton and won going away um, in really impressive style. And I, I was perhaps more interested in him back on, on Polytrack, uh, but I thought this was encouraging. He'd gone up in the weights for that and. Uh, you can see his tongue's lolling out, but that doesn't stop him. And he shapes perhaps as if a stronger gallop would have suited him. He's never going to get near the winner in a, in a month of Sundays, but you can see he's, he's going clear of the remainder. And if it had mm -hmm. been a stronger gallop or over further, he'd gone further clear. And I think he's one to keep on the right side, given that he's, he's basically, I think he's gone up a pound, but he's, he's not gone up to any uh, intent or purpose for that run. And I thought that was an encouraging reappearance. Mm. I um, thought it looked a good race. So that was only a small field, but the, the third horse, Urati's on fire, had some good form. You had mm. horses like Jalar and Kerbaj who were, who were far from exposed going into it. And it just looked like a race that we might look back later in the season and think it was quite strong. The way I look at it is if, if the winner hadn't run and it had been a, what was it, a six runner race, it had been a five runner race, Gorn would be going up five or six pounds for that. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and you know, some, sometimes it's just that degree of randomness. Well, you happen to run in a race where there's one that's a stone well in. Mm. Um, you end up not going up at all or going up a pound rather than the five or six pounds you might have gone up for comfortably winning the race without that horse, if you see what I mean. OK, now we've got an eye catcher from yesterday as well, haven't we? Um, Spirit of Parks, who's trained by Eric Alston, was second behind a horse called Ichi Moku, who was a winner. Uh, yesterday. Um, it was an interesting race. Obviously, there was a few horses. I think, yes, there was a strange show. Lots of horses beaten at very short prices around the country. Mm -hmm. um, Assembly was one of those who was sent yeah. off odds on in this. Ran no sort of race under, under Graham Lee. But Spirit of Parks, we're just trying to find the race for you. Spirit of Parks uh, finishes second here, Hugh. I think we've got it now. And it's a horse who caught your eye. Well, yeah, I mean, fact, I mean yeah, I'd put the rider with it that the race probably wasn't much good. I don't think the favourite's much good. And, and um, uh, yeah, the, those those in behind the first two are probably going to struggle, to be honest. But um, I thought the way Spirit of Parts has gone, travelled really well on only his second start from a stable that I do like with 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 sprinters, and they've they tend to come along nicely with their racing once they've shown something early on. And although this was his second start, and you'd therefore be thinking, well, next time one more run and then handicaps. Sprint maidens for three-year-olds and upwards at this time of year are so, so weak mm. that if they're finding one perhaps on a, sh a sharper track or on slightly better ground, because Newcastle is Newcastle, quite, quite a test, especially in soft ground, um, and there'll be, there'll be easier tracks over five furlongs, and he showed plenty of speed there, and I think he's the kind of horse who now he's gone the right way from start one to start two. I think he's stable to do well with, um, and he, he might be able to win. The trouble is there aren't that many sprint maidens around at this time of year, but they tend to be very weak because if you've got a horse mm. that's racing over five furlongs and is still a maiden at this stage of its career, i.e. into its three-year-old career, it's either been, been very backward or had a problem or isn't much good usually. There's usually one of those three okay. reasons. Um, so anything that shows a glimmer of, of form you need to be interested in, especially with a, a stable like this that does well with this kind of horse. Mm. They've got Blythe Spirit, haven't they, as well, Eric Horst, who's had quite a good run of things, was, I think, second at Chester behind Couture and ran it well again the other day at, uh, at York behind uh, Belldale Memory. So Eric Horston going very well with his two-year-olds uh, at the moment. So they are the uh, eye-catchers. So another look at them again, just to recap. We've got Body and Soul, who, of course, won the champion two-year-old trophy last year and ran well on reappearance at Ripon. We had Elwoods, who travelled so strongly at Doncaster. We had Tenbridge, who led at Chepstow and then got picked up. We had Gwarn, who was uh, behind impressive winner Kate Perron, and we had Spirit of Parks, who showed good speed as well. So, I mean, interesting collection there, but 
definitely five horses you can see going on to, to win a race hopefully soon. Yeah, I must admit when I was looking through the videos this week, there seemed to be, you know, obviously the ATR videos, there seemed to be a lot of impressive winners and I was tempted to put a few of those in um, because some of the more interesting horses were, were the winners this week. There were a lot of wide margin winners and I, I struggled to find perhaps quite as many as I, as I would usually find, but um, yeah, they're, they're the ones that I, I picked out anyway. Okay, so they are the uh, eye catchers. I think we're going to take a